All right. Well, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today uh, with uh, on website fundamentals. We're going to talk about uh, some best practices for building your website and what you can do uh, to increase conversions on your website. Uh, so today's agenda, we're going to talk about the basic elements of building an effective website. Uh, then I'm going to share some tips for enhancing your website to increase conversions and some actions that you can utilize to improve your overall website performance. Uh, I'm going to try to take some questions as we go out, but um, I'm also going to leave uh, some time towards the end um, if you have any questions as well. Um, and feel free to enter your questions in the chat. Just hover over at the top to access the control and click the more button for the chat and you can add your questions there. So who am I? Uh, my name is Nicole McCollum. Um, I am a digital marketing instructor at Noble Desktop. I teach um, the digital marketing certificate, but includes uh, digital strategy, of which website design is a part of that uh, class. Um, also uh, Google Analytics, search engine optimization, Google Ads, and uh, social media. Um, it is part of a two-week uh, digital marketing certificate that you can uh, take uh, at any time based upon your schedule. Uh, they are both day and evening classes. I also have 13 plus years experience in running my own web design and internet marketing company. And I'm a, I'm a bona fide foodie. So um, one of the things that's getting me through our quarantine is thinking about all the places I plan to have brunch when this is all over because I'm cooking uh, my own food right now, which is not the best. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you again for joining us and let's get started. So 75% uh, of users admit to making judgments about a company's credibility based on their website design, according to a Stanford survey. So the reality is that your website plays an important role in determining whether someone buys from you or not. And when I speak to business owners, usually what they focus on is driving more traffic to their site. Uh, they're always thinking, how can I get more traffic? And I always like to focus on how can we get this website to perform better? Um, because if you can get your website to perform better, you'll be able to increase the amount of leads and sales that you're uh, able to generate through your website. But if you continue to send traffic to a website that's performing poorly, where you have a low uh, conversion rate, and conversion rate is the percentage of people that actually takes action on your site, a desired action, and that action could be for them to make a purchase, it could be for them to download a white paper, it could be for them to subscribe or sign up, right? Um, so you want to get more people taking action on your site. And generally across websites, there's about a 2% on average conversion rate, but you can also look to see what the conversion rate is generally for your own uh, industry or vertical that you're in. And the idea is that you wanna make sure that your website is converting at a high rate uh, before you focus on driving more traffic. Of course, if you're not getting a lot of traffic to your site right now, then you want to be getting some traffic so that you can be able to measure your conversion rate. But generally, most of the websites that I deal with, uh, people, one of the challenges, they're getting traffic, but they're not converting. And so usually you want to focus on increasing uh, that conversion rate. So according to an e-consultancy report, for every $92 spent on acquiring prospects, only $1 is actually spent on boosting conversions. So what that means is that a lot of businesses, a lot of website owners are leaving money on the table because they're not focused on uh, improving conversions. And if you continue to pour water into a leaky bucket, it's not gonna hold very much water. And so it's the same philosophy of your website. You wanna make sure that your website is not uh, losing uh, conversions um, as you work on it. So this is the case for increasing conversion. So if you have 1% conversion and you generate around $9,600 in revenue based upon that conversion rate, a 1% conversion rate, if you're able to increase that conversion just by 1%, you can significantly increase your revenue um, just by increasing your website conversions without even sending more traffic to your site. So assuming you have the same amount of uh, website visitors um, and you're simply working on increasing conversions, just by doing that, you can see 
a huge increase in your overall revenue. Um, so that's why I, uh, the nature of my web design business is we specialize in website redesigns, and that's a main focus of ours. How can we uh, increase conversion? I'm just going to check to see if there's any questions here. Um, so if you're not hearing uh, the audio, you might want to consider calling in um, using the call in number. Um, uh, to call in that might have been included in the email that you got um, with the information for today. Okay, so how can you design your website to convert more traffic into sales? The first thing is to master the basic. There are some core basic elements that you need to have in place when you're building your website. And believe it or not, most people, I, I even see this with larger companies, they don't have the basics. Um, and it starts with a professional design. So you wanna make sure that you have a professional design. We've heard the saying that first impressions matter. And that applies to your website as well. Uh, the appearance of your website, how your website functions can be a difference between acquiring a sale or losing a potential sale. Users typically expect for your website to have a clear and simple design that's typical of your industry or your vertical. So for example, they expect for your logo to be in the upper left corner, right? Uh, these are standard uh, design conventions that people naturally gravitate to us. So if you have an e-commerce site, they expect to see uh, an, a shopping cart icon in the top right, because without even thinking about it, that's where we tend to click. So we want to make sure that we are uh, keeping to these design conventions that people have come to be, um, has, has gotten comfortable with and known for, right? Uh, when you uh, don't utilize design conventions, it creates confusion. And that's when people start abandoning in your website. And that's when you start having a, a negative uh, impact on your conversion rate. You also want to make sure that you're utilizing um, relevant banner images on your site. So generally, this is referred to this banner image. You can see me moving my mouse around. It's referred to as the banner image or the hero image. And it's one of the best practices of using um, design trends um, to have a banner image on your site. What I want you to do is make sure that that banner image is relevant to the product or service that you're selling. So I'm using this image of True Vanny, um, and they sell uh, supplements uh, and protein-based powders. And notice they have pictures of that specifically um, on their site, right? Um, showing you what the packaging looks like so you can get an idea. Um, and so that the visitor can know exactly what the site is about when they land on the website as well. Now, if you don't have um, pictures of your products, you can also use images that represent your buyer persona, right? So what is this, the message that you're trying to communicate? You want when people look at that image that they can have a pretty good idea uh, that this is what the site is about. You've heard the saying like a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So you wanna make sure that that image is clear. If you can use images based upon the products or services that you're selling, you can do that. Um, you can also use stock images. Most people aren't a big fan of stock, stock, uh, stock photos, but you can utilize stock photos from sites like iStockPhoto um, and Deposit Photos, for example, and Shutterstock. They all offer um, royalty-free uh, stock photos that you can use on your site. The other thing that you want to make sure is that you're using a seamless navigation. So your website navigation plays an important role in determining whether or not website visitors can find what they're looking for on your site, right? So your navigation needs to be clear, it needs to be concise, and it needs to be descriptive and telling people exactly um, you know, what, what they're gonna find when they click on that page, for example. If it's not, then it leads to frustration and it leads to people leaving your website. Uh, so a, generally for a seamless navigation, you don't, you want to have anywhere from maybe six to nine uh, menu tabs at the top and you want to put your most important um, menu tabs at the top um, because that's what people are going to focus on. If you have a large website, you want to put your secondary navigations in the footer, right? Um, so that it's, uh, 
your most important uh, uh, menus are able to be found by the people landing on your website. The other thing is that you want to make sure that people can find the pages on your site or they can get back to the home page from any page on your site that they're located on. So generally you want it to be where someone doesn't have to click more than two or three times to get to a page. Um, and, and by the way, uh, we, in, in SEO, because I, I teach SEO as well, we call that uh, click depth. And the, the more clicks uh, to get to a page, the harder it is for search engine uh, titles and bots to be able to, to find those pages and indexes unless it's in like a sitemap. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your navigation, your click depth at least two to three clicks at the most. You also want to utilize breadcrumbs. Um, breadcrumbs basically let people know where they are on your site. So uh, sometimes not all websites have breadcrumbs, but it's especially important for e-commerce sites. Um, especially because, for example, if someone is coming through a search engine, they may not land on your website homepage. And so having a breadcrumb navigation lets them know what section of the site they're on, what pages. It's also important for the hierarchy of your site, for search engine spiders uh, and Google, but to understand the hierarchy of your site so that they can index those pages that are not on your top level navigation as well. Um, so that's something that you want to keep in mind. So if you, for example, um, I did a search for food delivery, and if you notice here on Grubhub, your uh, breadcrumbs, their breadcrumb is also shown um, in the navigation, uh, in the link navigation, right? Um, so it basically shows you in search engines exactly where uh, you are going to be going on the site. So adding breadcrumbs, especially for large sites, with a lot of pages is uh, essential for helping people know where they're on the site, navigate through the site, but for also helping search engines to index your site as well. I'm just gonna stop to see if we have questions. Okay, so someone is sharing on Splash is a free photo site. Thank you for that. Um, also, there's another uh, Pixels, P-E-X-E-L-S um, is another, um, uh, site where you can get free stock photos as well. So you might want to look that up. Okay, the other thing that you want to do is you want to be clear. So when someone lands on your web page, uh, you want to make sure they understand what the site is about and what it is they can do here, right? What's in it for me? Now, uh, without, if I were to remove the logo from this, uh, from this website, um, you, what would you think? You would think about this might be real estate or this might be about a resort um, in uh, maybe Miami or in some island, right? When in fact, this is a dentist uh, in, uh, in South Beach. So basically the banner image has, uh, does not communicate what it is this uh, dentist does, right? Um, it has a picture of the beach, the ocean. So that's what I mean by making sure that you're being clear when people come to your site. Um, the other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're utilizing a clear message, right? Making sure that you have a compelling headline and subheadline um, when people land on your site. So, uh, for example, contactually, they are an, a SaaS company. And um, they, they have changed over, but this is one of their um, older websites. And as you can see here, they have their value proposition clearly stated above the fold when people land on the site. And above the fold, I mean, it must, you don't have to scroll to, in order for them to see the message. Um, you can see the message at the top. Um, and their value proposition, which is essentially the promise of what they're going to deliver to their target audience. It has maximized your network ROI, return on investment, more referrals, more repeat business. So they're saying, if you use our tool, you're going to be able to get more referrals and more repeat business, right? And then it goes on in the sub headline to say, contactually helps businesses follow up with the right people at the right time to maximize relationship return on investment. This is a very good value proposition. So you want to have, when people come to your site, you want to help let them know right away what is the benefit um, they get from, uh, from using your products or services. And the other thing is that now it's, your homepage is usually trying to 
do a lot of different things because you're driving a lot of different buyer personas to your homepage. You're driving prospective customers, you're driving customers, you're driving potential employees. Um, so there's a lot of uh, things your homepage generally try to approve. So one of the things is, especially if you are targeting uh, many different audiences or you're targeting um, different uh, products or services, you want those to lead off into their own home pages. So basically, as you can see here, um, under uh, the watch now call to action, it has for individuals, for teams, right? Because these are two different buyer personas. So if you have uh, a situation like this, you want when someone, when the person click for teams, they go to a page that's giving them more information that's specifically related to teams. Because the way that you talk to an individual is gonna be different to the way that you speak to teams, right? Their needs may be different, for example. So you wanna make sure that you are addressing the needs of the different buyer personas that you have or the different um, products or services that you might be selling instead of trying to sell everything on one page. I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna stop here just to see if anybody has questions. So uh, index your site means recorded in the Google search engine essentially. So um, search engines does three things. They typically crawl your site to gather all the information about what your site is about. And then they place that site into their index, which is much like a filing cabinet, um, so that they can later retrieve the pages based upon what people are searching for. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, so we talk, I talk a little bit about landing pages. This is more of um, just covering the basics. Uh, generally, we have a class, a website, from a website class that goes more into uh, details based on home pages, um, product pages, and service pages. But if you have a specific question, I'm happy to answer that question um, for you. Uh, next thing is the quality of your content, right? You wanna make sure that you're creating content that's going to act, uh, address the concerns um, that people have. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? So you want to highlight the problem that you solve in your content. You also wanna highlight your solution um, for that problem in your content. And you wanna speak directly to the objections that your target audience might have when you're creating your content so that it can, uh, you can ease those objections and make it easier for them to get closer to a yes to converting for you, right? Um, the other thing that's really important is having a clear call to action. So a call to action basically lets people know what's the next logical step that they should take on your site. So for example, here on the Tata, Tata Happy Skin Care site, you have um, Add to Bad, um, which is the call to action. Uh, typical call to actions can be buy now, uh, request a code, schedule an appointment. Of course, the call to action is going to be different depending on the business that you're in. So for example, for Noble Desktop, their typical call to action might be register now or sign up now, right? Um, for a lead generation business, it might be download a white paper, for example. So it's going to be different, but you want to tell people what action they should take, what's the next step they should take. And also that call to action should uh, be clear. It should be above the fold. And it should contrast with your background color. So you're not going to obviously use like a light, for example, using a light gray on a white background may not stand out as heavily as this green button um, on a white background. So you want to make sure that the colors are contrasting um, so that it stands out. Um, also, you want to add testimonials. Um, onto your uh, website. And you can add testimonials on your homepage, and you can also add testimonials throughout um, the pages on your site. If you're an e-commerce site, having reviews on those pages can also be very beneficial because they help your, uh, your users to make a decision. Now, a lot of times people say, well, I don't wanna have reviews on the site um, because negative reviews can hurt my business. Really, negative reviews studies show that um, if you have perfect reviews, if you have all five-star reviews, people are less likely to trust those reviews 
Um, so if you're if you have reviews where maybe there is a 4.5 or 4.7 and you have some negative reviews, it can actually help you because it actually will help educate your audience and will actually help them to see how you respond and how you handle customer service as well. Um, for example, uh, I am a big online shopper and I do I read reviews all the time and sometimes um, there might be a negative review that might be given to a company. One time I was buying a dress and, um, you know, the person put that the dress was too long for her height. Well, guess what? Even though they give a negative review for that item, I still bought it because I'm a pretty tall person, right? So the reviews doesn't necessarily have to hurt you. So Wikijob, which is an online um, uh, uh, a testing platform in the UK, they did a study um, testing testimonials on one page and, and uh, testing three testimonials on another page. And they actually saw a 34% improvement in their conversions by using testimonials on their website pages. So I would encourage you um, to uh, test testimonials and test to see how well they perform on your site. And not just testimonials, you can test testimonials that's just plain text, you can test testimonials that include uh, pictures or images of your uh, customers. Um, you can also test video testimonials, which can even be better than typical static uh, testimonials as well. Um, so I would encourage you to use that, not just on your homepage, but throughout the pages um, on your website. Yeah, so uh, um, if you can get a picture and the testimonial, of course, of a real person, um, then that increases your credibility, right? Uh, and if you can get a video, even better. So um, I would encourage you to look at that. Um, also, provide social proof. So if your company has been mentioned in the press, if you, you have products that has been rated the top products, you can add those um, logos onto your website, like featured in, for example. So for example, on my site, I've gotten press and uh, like uh, Inc.com and, and Forbes business and things like that. And I have that included on my website. That adds to your credibility, right? Um, and it makes it easier for people to do business with you, especially if you're a startup company, um, that can go a very long way. The other thing I, I encourage you to do is offer a guarantee. So um, this NYC steam cleaning, I was looking to get my carpets clean um, around the holidays and I came across NYC steam cleaning and I was very impressed with their website. They had a very nice professional website. Um, but one of the things that really um, made me go with them is the fact that they offered a 30 day guarantee that if I wasn't happy um, with the cleaning that they will return at no charge and no obligation and clean the carpet. Now, that is a strong guarantee. It means that, you know, they stand by their work, right? And that eliminates objection um, from people buying from you. And it also gives you a competitive advantage over your competitors. And uh, um, for example, this doesn't necessarily have to be a refund or a monetary. It could be a happiness guarantee, right? It doesn't have to be something that costs you a lot of money. Um, it has to be something that your uh, target audience find of value. So for example, for Noble Desktop, they offer you uh, six months free retakes. And because of the interruption, uh, according to the COVID uh, virus, um, you're going to be able they've extended that up until a year right so they're removing um uh, any uh hesitation that you might have if you take an online class because you might have really wanted to take an in-person class you can come back anytime within a year and retake that class at no additional charge to you um so these are the, are the type of guarantees um that i that i talk about specifically so even for me in my own business i was just speaking to one of my prospects the, uh, a couple of days ago, and I said to them, listen, we guarantee our work. If there was something included in our deliverables and it's not working, we will fix it at no charge for you because that is our promise of what we were going to deliver from the beginning, right? So think about how you can offer some sort of guarantee to your our target customers. 
Um, the other thing is that you want to ensure that your site is mobile friendly. So I was consulting with a very large company. And one of the things I noticed is that they had twice as much traffic um, coming in on their mobile site, but their mobile site was converting at 50% less of their desktop. Now, that was an easy fix. It clearly shows that their mobile, something is off with their mobile experience, right? Why are people not converting as high on mobile? And just by being able to identify that, they can now go and uh, troubleshoot their mobile issues and help, Im and help to improve their conversions, right? Because again, the idea is not to get more traffic, the idea is to maximize. So if you know that people are converting at a higher rate on desktop, that clearly lets you know that something is wrong with your mobile experience and you have room to grow by improving your mobile conversion rate. Now, once you're able to improve those conversion rates, then you might want to consider looking at traffic, right? So it's important for you to be paying attention um, to your mobile traffic um, uh, uh, and looking at, you know, what percentage of those people are actually converting for you um, on desktop versus mobile. And these can also give you really quick wins as well. The other thing that you want to pay attention to is the speed of your site. How fast does your site load? Most of us, we are not going to sit and wait for our website to load, right? Um, uh, according to a study by Akamai, a one second delay in page load time yields 11% viewer, fewer page views, 16% decrease in customer satisfaction, and a 7% loss in conversions, right? Um, so just by improving your page speed, you can uh, increase your conversion rate. Now, uh, there's a site called GT Metrics that you can see on here. It's G-T-M-E-T-R-I-X.com. Um, and you can run your site through GT Metrics for you to get an idea of your page speed. You can also, um, if you have Google Analytics installed, you can get a page speed report inside of Google Analytics that lets you know what the individual speed is of each of, each of your sites. Because one of the things I want you to do is not just look at the page speed of your home page because each page on your site has different content. So each page on your site might have different load times. So you want to look at your pages on an individual basis to see, um, you know, which pages are, what is the, the speed? Generally, you want your page to load anywhere from three to five seconds. Anything above that is taking too long. One of the places that I would encourage you to start is to look at um, your top traffic page or look at your pages that have the highest bounce rate. Um, and bounce rate means that people come to your site and they left without visiting any other pages on your site. Look at those pages to see, um, you know, what are the, the speed of those pages to see if there's room for improvement um, on those pages. Questions? Okay, the next thing is to make your website secure. So um, this is NYU's uh, website. And as you can see, if I pull it up in a Chrome browser, for example, it shows not secure, right? You will say that NYU would have a, a secure site. Um, but believe it or not, even some large companies haven't taken the step to secure uh, their site. And so how do you do that? You do that by adding an SSL certificate to your website. You can purchase an SSL certificate through your web host um, company, and you will need to migrate your site from an HTT protocol to an HTTPS protocol. So typically when you go to a site and you pull up that link, it generally says HTTP or HTTPS. Um, and this is something your web developer will have to do, but I'm just letting you know that this is something that you want to take um, action on on your site because most of us are not going to visit a website that says not secure. Now, uh, most people probably would go to NYU site because they're a recognizable name um, and they have a certain reputation and credibility. But for most of us who don't have that level of reputation and credibility, um, it might be a, a deterrent for people visiting your site. So you wanna be able to take the time 
um, to make sure that your site is secure. Also, what we've seen from an, a search engine optimization perspective is that when you secure your site, you can experience a slight boost in your search engine ranking. So you're able to show up um, slightly higher for your keywords that you want to show up for on search engines, um, higher in the search engine results pages um, as well. Yes, SSL. And SSL is purchased through your, um, your hosting company. And SSL stands for Secured Socket Layer. And basically what that means is that it encrypts the information from the time someone pulls up your website uh, or enters your website into a browser to the time the website loads. It encrypts that information so that your site becomes more secure, right? Um, and it protects information of your users. Now, I'm going to also share some tips for you to enhance uh, your website. So the first thing is you want to make sure that you have an easy checkout process if you have an e-commerce site. So uh, one of the things that drives me absolutely nuts when, I, uh, when I'm doing online shopping is websites that force me to create an account. You want to avoid doing that because that study showed that it decreases your conversion rate and increases your website abandonment rate. So you want to give people the option to, to check out as a guest as opposed to forcing them to uh, create an account. The other thing is that you want to avoid any surprise charges that might come out um, in the checkout process, for example, right? And you want to keep um, your fields that you're requesting in the forms at a minimum um, so that it's, e it's easier for people to, for, to, um, to check out. Now, for every additional um, field that you add, you're going to see your conversion rate is going to, is going to drop because it's going to take longer for people to fill that out. That is why uh, if you've ever shopped on Amazon, they have a one-click checkout because it improves their conversion rate. So try to make your checkout process, if you have an e-commerce site, as simple as possible. Now, if you, what if you don't have an e-commerce site and you have a lead generation site? The same thing, you want to ask for the most, um, if you're collecting people's name, phone, email, you, know, you, you want to collect some data on them, you want to ask for the most pertinent information. I, for one, tend to just want to get a name, a phone, an email, and once I get that, I have the valuable information that then I can follow up with uh, that person, right? Some of you may want to pre-qualify them by, you know, uh, asking a budget amount or asking uh, company revenue or maybe a company title. Um, one of the things I'm a big fan of is getting that crucial information up front, the name, phone, and email. And then once that person submits that, on the next page, that now that they've uh, given you some goodwill, on the next page, you can ask them for some more information um, that you might want to collect, right? Because now you have, you, you have their contact information. So even if you don't get that information, you can follow up with them um, and then you can collect that information. Um, the, another good thing for you to do is when you're designing your forms, it's better for you to put the field names of the form above the fields as opposed to uh, putting the field names inside the field. Because then uh, once someone uh, puts their mouse into that field, that field name disappears and then people might get confused as to, you know, what is, what is, what was I supposed to enter into this field, right? So um, these are just some best practices that you can use for designing your checkout process and for designing um, any forms that you might have on your website. Um, the other thing that I want to encourage you to do is optimize your thank you pages. This is something else that most people don't take advantage of, right? Um, so uh, on this page, as you can see, it just says, thank you for your donation. Your donation is complete. But if I, you know, was uh, working on the site, as a, I would, for example, if it was a one-time donation, I would say, well, perhaps now you want to subscribe to a monthly donation, or maybe you want to share some information of, you know, how your donation is going to impact people, how many people it's going to help, 
or encourage them to share that page, right? So one of the things I was impressed with that Noble is doing is when I signed up for one of their free seminars, I noticed right away that they had thanks for registering, tell your friends and colleagues. And then it says share on Facebook, share on Twitter, and see more free seminars. Now, this was a great, the see more free seminars, I thought was absolutely great because it also made me click that button again to see, hmm, what else might I be interested in, right? And it keeps me longer on the site um, as well, uh, learning more about what Noble Desktop has to offer. So these are little things that can make a big difference um, in your conversions and expanding your reach as well. I'm going to share some other uh, scenarios of where you can um, also, when people fill out a form, how you can add things on your site. So, for example, on this here, uh, this is thanks to start the conversation. Here's what will happen next. So it's telling people, you know, what uh, uh, is going to happen next. Uh, 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 one of our engagement consultants will get in touch with you, for example. So it's setting expectations. So this is a this is a great way to set the tone. Um, and, to, and to also build on the goodwill that you've just gotten. Um, when someone downloads a lead magnet, so for example, Punchbowl is an online site where you can create invitations and things like that. So when uh, I downloaded this report, how brands can create fabulous content for months, it immediately tell me, um, you know, I can share it on Twitter, I can share it on LinkedIn, and guess what? If people are sharing it, you are expanding your reach. You're reaching more people and you're, you're not paying anything extra for it, right? So these are all little things that can add up to big wins um, for you and quick wins as well. Um, and then this one, finally, uh, it's someone makes a purchase and they show you a picture of what you purchased and they also tell you to share it on different um, on different sites. And Amazon does a great job with this because they also tell you, well, perhaps you might be interested in these other products or, right? So they upsell you on other products. So if you have other products that people can sell, um, you can do that as well. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to use product videos. Studies show that 80%, uh, 70, I'm sorry, 70% of websites that have videos tend to have a higher conversion rate. So adding videos onto your website can greatly impact your conversion rate. And videos doesn't just have to be product videos. It can be tutorials. It can be um, videos of your CEO talking to people. It can be uh, videos of your customers sharing their experience on your site as well. Um, so, and these videos can be used in different ways throughout your site. You can add a, for example, you can add a video on your About Us page, which is one of the most visited pages on your site. So, for example, if you have Google Analytics installed uh, on your site, you would notice that one of the pages that people frequent the most is the About Us page because they want to know who is behind this company right? Can I trust these people? What is their background, right? So adding a video and adding that personal touch um, uh, uh, in a video on your About Us page, um, speaking directly to your values or, you know, what, what uh, people can expect from your company can also uh, enhance your page and also build your credibility as well. There's a reason why, you know, you see a lot of CEOs out front in commercials talking directly um, to audiences, right, um, is because it works. Um, this is New York Steam Cleaning again, and um, sharing my experience again, I called the number, um, and they did, it went to voicemail, and I didn't want to leave a message because I didn't want them, you know, saving my number and calling me back if I didn't decide to go with them, um, but I had a question, and so I went to the chat, um, and I asked my question, and I was able to get it answered, um, and I ended up, as I said, I ended up um, hiring them and I've actually used them at, since December, I've actually used them a couple of times already. Um, adding a live chat to your site can um, save someone from leaving if they had a question um, that was not answered in your content because people may not want to take up the phone to call, they may not want to be placed on hold, and so um, having that service can, can benefit you greatly. In fact, um, websites, visit, websites that have live chat saw uh, are 82% more likely to convert visitors, right? Um, one thing I'm going to tell you is that if you're going to use a live chat on your site, make sure that you have someone that's going to be monitoring it 
and make sure that you have the hours that it's available um, on your site. And also, I, I would say leave the chat uh, static so that people um, can access it if they want to, um, instead of just having it uh, pop up, um, you know, after a certain time or in a certain page, it can become kind of spooky. Um, we all, are, you know, are wary about privacy issues and things like that. So I would encourage you to leave your chat um, and, and let it know that it's visible. Generally, the chat is in the bottom right hand corner of your site It's where people expect it to be. It's where people, um, you know, uh, look for it, for example. Um, so you could, uh, this is another way. And one of the, the great thing about this is that adding a live chat to your site is really not that expensive. Um, there's a company out there called Live Chat. And I think it's about $20 per month for you to add this feature onto your site. Um, so you can uh, consider that as well. Okay. What about encouraging people to create an account and offering benefits? Um, that can work if the, if the benefit, again, is of value to them. Um, but you have to really ask yourself, like, what is the major benefit of getting people to create an account? Because if they are making a purchase on your site, you're going to get their email and contact information anyway. Um, so you have to uh, understand, like, what is the real value behind getting people to create an account? Who do you suggest as a host? Do most companies you still use still WordPress? Um, I'm a big fan of WordPress. I most of the websites that I build are in WordPress because um, uh, one of the things that I do is SEO, and it's very helpful from that standpoint because there's a plugin for just about everything um, that you can do. So, for example, I talk about um, improving your website speed, and one of the fastest way to improve your website speed is to uh, compress your images. And in WordPress, you have a plugin that you can use to compress your images, right? Um, without needing to go back to a web developer or without needing um, to code anything. Um, so I recommend WordPress. I have, uh, this is my second business and I've used GoDaddy from since 2004 as my web host. There are other web hosts out there like WP Engine if you're using a, a WordPress site, but they tend to be more expensive. I like GoDaddy because they're inexpensive um, and they do have 24 hour support, which is really important. Some web hosting companies tend to offer a ticketing system, whereas you have to enter a ticket and they would get back to you within 24 hours. Well, if you're having an issue with your site, if your site is down, um, you can't wait 24 hours to get that site back up or, or until they check their ticket system, right? Because you're every time, every, you know, minute, every hour your site is down, you're losing opportunity. So um, make sure that whoever you go with that they offer a 24 hour um, support. Okay. Um, and would you look for service that would hit and provide marketing features like email services? Um, generally, uh, you know, there are a lot of companies that try to do a lot of things. I'm a, uh, I'm a big fan in, you know, going after the companies that specialize in that because you would get um, a, a lot more from that company because that's their specialty. They're an expert in that field. Um, so when it comes to like email automa automation, um, there are a lot of sites out there. Personally, I use Constant Contact, um, but there are other platforms out there like Infusionsoft, um, um, for example, or HubSpot or um, MailChimp is another free um, email automation. Or uh, So there's a lot of different tools out there where you can get better um, service and better features. Um, I've heard good things about Blue, Bluehost. I've never actually used them myself, so um, I can't really speak to that. Um, what uh, uh, Daniel, you're asking what skins. I don't understand that question. Do you mean themes? Um, so uh, Colibre is one of uh, uh, is uh, another website teams that you can use. Um, when I built all custom WordPress websites, so I really um, I don't use um, a lot of WordPress themes. Um, but Colibre 
um, I think is one of the more popular ones. And then also Elegant Themes, T-E-H-E-M-E-S um, dot com is another one as well. But you, uh, and I know Noble Desktop offer custom um, WordPress website design. You don't necessarily have to use a theme. A theme is essentially a template, right? And if you use that theme, other people can use the exact same theme as you have. So if you wanted to get a custom site, you can design a custom site um, in Photoshop, for example, and convert it to HTML, CSS, and then put it on WordPress as a content management platform, which is what we do. So you don't necessarily need a WordPress theme um, uh, unless it's for budgetary reasons. You can also have a custom WordPress site as well. Okay, the other thing that you want to do is you want to decide on an exit intent offer. So exit intent offer basically pops up as you are about to leave the site. It uses exit technology to determine when someone is headed for the back button or to click that um, X box on your browser, right? Um, and exit intent offers can work really well in helping you um, capture people email address, for example, um, or getting someone to complete their purchase, for example. Um, so this is HelloFresh. Um, and they, uh, as I was leaving the site, it says, enjoy six free meals. Well, yeah, as I said, I'm a foodie. So of course I took them up on that offer and ended up subscribing to their service, right? Um, because they, you get a trial and then you see if you like it, right? So um, again, this is just one example. Some examples could be a free gift. It could be a free download, for example. It could be a coupon. Um, but the idea is to get people um, to take some sort of small action um, before they leave the site. Uh, so what do you do after you have mastered the basics? So as I mentioned before, the first thing is you want to make sure um, that you're tracking your website activity um, because you cannot improve what you don't measure. So if you are just sending traffic to your site and you're not measuring your website performance, then you're not going to be able to improve that performance. So you want to make sure that you have tracking set up on your site. Now, there are different forms of tracking, but by far, one of the most widely used um, online tracking um, is Google Analytics, right? So Google Analytics is a free tool by Google um, that you can install on your website to track your website activity. Now, when you set up Google Analytics uh, by installing the tracking code, it's going to start collecting data. Uh, from your site. But to really get the full power of Google Analytics, you're going to need to set up what we call conversion tracking, which in Google Analytics is referred to as goals, right? You're going to need to set up goals um, based upon the actions that you want people to take so that you can then be able to measure your conversion rate. You can then be able to see, for example, which pages are converting or which offers are converting the best for you. Um, and then if you have an e-commerce site, you have to take an additional step and you have to set up e-commerce tracking um, on your site. Um, I know we do have a, a Google Analytics class coming up where we're going to cover some of the basics, but we also have uh, a full, um, uh, full two-day class on Google Analytics that goes through all uh, the uh, uh, setups that you need to have in place in order for you to access um, the data that you need to analyze your site effectively. Um, no, uh, not currently. Um, Google doesn't offer a class on Google Data Studio currently. Okay, so once you have Google Analytics set up, one of the things you will be able to determine is if you're attracting the right visitors to your site. Um, so based upon your target audience and their demographics, um, uh, or for example, if you're in a B2B sector, um, you're looking at their firmographics. Based upon that, you want to make sure that you're attracting the right people. Because for example, if, if uh, in looking at the site, you know that your, your target audience are um, 55 and older, by looking at this, you can see the dominant um, audience is 25 to 54, right? 
So if you were targeting uh, 55 and older and this was your website, it would tell you, well, you, one of the reasons your website probably isn't converting is because you're not attracting the right demographic, right? So um, this is a report in Google Analytics uh, that you will be able to access, which it takes an extra step for you to configure it. But that's one of the first things that you are going to want to look at. Um, also in Google Analytics, it lets you know where you're losing your users. So um, there are four main reports in Google Analytics. One of the reports is the behavior report. And it lets you know what pages people come in and what pages they drop off on, right? So you see this red uh, tick red line here. It tells you um, uh, that a good portion of the visitors are dropping off um, by this page that they're starting on. And then these lines show you like what pages they, uh, they uh, go on to, right? What pages they visit next and how they flow through the site. This is important because if you see that there are pages where people are dropping off, you want to look at ways that you can improve the flow of those people. Um, you want to also compare things like, well, what are the actions? What pages do people who convert on my site, what pages do they typically go to? What is the flow of the people who convert or take a specific action on my site? And then how can I um, you know, work on my pages where people are dropping off to usher those people to take that same um, basically step or go through that same funnel, right, of how people who convert. So these are some of the insights that you can gain um, once you're utilizing um, a Google Analytics for your website so that you can improve your website performance. The other thing is that you want to analyze your top website pages. So um, you want to see what pages are the most visited pages on your site. And you want to look at, do you have call to actions on those pages? What, uh, for example, on one of my pages, I noticed it was bringing me a lot of traffic, but I, it was a, a blog page, for example, and I didn't really have any call to action on that page. So what I did is I added a report for download. And sure enough, I started to build my email list by taking that simple step, right? So looking at the pages on your site and seeing what relevant call to actions you can add on those pages can also help you to boost your conversion rate as well. Um, and then you want to also identify pages with high bounce rate. Now, when you look at the pages in Google Analytics, you don't want to look at your average because averages lie, right? You want to look at it on a page by page basis. Now, not all pages with a high bounce rate is a bad thing because, for example, you might have a page where people are just coming on that page just to get your phone number and then they leave. That, and so if you expect that page to just, you know, get people to get their phone number and leave, then naturally, that page will have a high bounce rate. So you have to uh, take this into context of your own business when you look at these pages to see, well, should the bounce rate on this page be high or should people be navigating to another page when they land on this page um, and therefore the bounce rate is too high and we need to do something to improve the, the, the bounce rate or decrease the bounce rate of this page. The other thing that you want to do is you want to remove friction by um, adding landing pages into the phone. Um, landing pages are basically standalone pages on your site. Um, and usually the purpose of landing pages is that they're tied to the ads that you're running. And the reason for that is because you want to have message match. So I run Google ads for clients and when they come to me, most of the time, um, one of the reasons why they're spending a lot of money and they're not getting any results on their Google ads is because they're all driving traffic to their homepage. So let's say, for instance, um, you know, uh, uh, Noble Desktop is promoting um, their Google Analytics class, but they sent out an email telling you to sign up to Google Analytics um, and to, at a discounted rate, but then when you click through, it takes you to the homepage. What's going to happen? you're going to be lost and then you have to look to find that page right so the best practice is to send that person to a page that is specifically related to that email where they can take that specific action that you want them to take and generally landing pages do not have a top level navigation or any navigation at all because you you want to keep people focused on precisely what you want them to do that specific action 
Um, so you want to make sure that you're not distracting them and you're giving them the information, just what they need to take that action, right? Um, so that's something that you want to pay attention to. So according to a study by HubSpot, businesses with 31 to 40 landing pages generate seven times more leads than businesses with only one to five landing pages. Um, and there are tools out there. If you have a developer on your team, you can build landing pages. There are tools out there um, that you can use um, to create landing pages. One of them is called Unbounce, U-N-B-O-U-N-C-E. Um, there's also lead pages, um, which allows you to create fast landing pages um, uh, at, a, at a high rate pretty quickly. Um, so you don't have to wait like on a web developer for you to be able to create those pages. Um, and then you also want to implement, if you're an e-commerce site, you want to implement a cart abandonment strategy, right? Um, so 70% of people that visit your website will abandon your shopping cart for a number of reasons. And so um, you want to have a strategy to bring those people back to your site. By the way, on average, less than 10% of people that visit your site is going to take action right away. So you need to have a final way to stay in front of those people and nurture that relationship. And remarketing is one way for you to do that. Remarketing is those ads that follow you around. So if you've ever gone to a website, put an item in a shopping cart, and then you didn't check out and you saw that ad showing up in your Facebook feed or maybe on a new site that you went to or maybe on Instagram, they are implementing a, a, a remarketing strategy, right? Um, and so you want to make sure that you have something in place that's going to bring people back to your site. So for example, in the case of Noble Desktop, even though they're not an e-commerce site, if you see that someone came to your specific site, uh, they came and they look at, for example, the Google Analytics um, class and they didn't sign up. Well, you can create a, a, an audience just based on those people who visit that site and then you can show some follow-up ad. Maybe you can show them an, uh, you know, uh, a, a, an ad prompting them to download the curriculum or testimonials that people have said about that specific class. Or maybe you can give them a special offer for them to come back, right? Because it has shown some sort of interest, but they were not quite ready to take that action. Studies show it takes on average about seven interactions before someone actually converts. So you want to be able to have a strategy in place to bring those people um, back to your site. Um, uh, and actually that brought me straight to remarketing. Uh, and that's the end. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm happy to take some questions that you all might have. Thank you all for your kind words. Could you come out to increase conversion rate for a blog site that doesn't have any its own product? So, um, so Katie, what, what exactly is the action you want people to take on your site? So most blogs, um, they, the number one action is trying to get people to subscribe to their email list, right? Because you can, uh, as the saying goes, there's money in the list. So if you build a list of followers, you have something you can then later, um, you know, offer them or you can sell advertisement, advertisement, right? So making sure you uh, have a subscribe to blog on your site, making sure that you have, uh, you know, be the first to know to get our latest blog post delivered to your inbox, for example. Um, maybe, so I once was on a site um, that talks about a blog site that talks about patterns and they were basically offering you a list of five patterns for free that you can download. So that's one way. Um, or maybe it's a recipe blog site and you can um, offer, you know, to get um, some uh, meal plans for free or something like that. So it depends on what your blog is, uh, is about. Um, but uh, usually most blogs are centered around getting people to join their email list or getting their email address, especially if you don't have a physical product. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time and um, feel free to check us out for um, more um, upcoming seminars. Okay, so thanks everyone and have a great evening and be safe. Uh, and I hope to see you on another webinar soon.